All right, so um, a rock, let's say uh, a punk because of the speed of it and um, I guess the intensity, so rock too, but uh, a rock, punk rock, a drum sound with uh, four dynamic mics, only four dynamic mics and no samples, you know, because we're making a rock record and uh, can't say I'm a huge fan of samples on a rock record. Uh, so what I'll do is let, let's just jump right into it. I'll uh, uh, let me play a little bit of it for you so you can hear the the the, the final result. And then I'll go into uh, the miking and, and where I got the idea for the miking and some of the processing. So let's have a listen. find a section where there's some top tom right There's a drum sound, uh, mixed, De definitely mixed. But uh, there it is, and I'll go into the. Uh, let's let's remove some of this mix now. Let's actually let's take everything off, and let me mute these. And what I'll do is I'll put the limiter and stuff back on just so we don't lose levels. So here's the a little <laughs> a little less exciting without the mix, but everything's there. So here's the kick mic. You'll notice that uh, on the kick drum I'm using is um, the drum set I'm using is my Tama uh, Birch Bubinga, and the kick is a 26. The tom is a 13. Floor tom is a 16, and the snare drum is my Tama um, SLP Kapur, which is really really good for this stuff. So I'm using an RE20 on the kick drum, and I'm not using a resonant. Uh, hole. There is a resonant head. There's actually no hole. It's a full head. And <clears throat> uh, when you're using uh, four dynamic mics or dynamic mics in general, I, 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 they tend to sound a little tight and congested. So I really want to get as much length and tone and, and sound as possible. So I'm actually keeping things very wide open here. And uh, the other reason for that is that I got this miking technique uh, this came from a, a lot of just spending a lot of time on Pinterest and, uh, and, and looking at, you know, just, I just love looking at pictures of drum set on drum sets on Pinterest and a lot of the pictures of, you know, John Bonham's kit and Mitch Mitchell and some Charlie Watts and some, and some Bill Ward from the late sixties to early seventies, there was a really cool mic technique that they used live. A lot of the pictures that we see aren't in the studio. This is a live miking technique. And they were they were more often using dynamic mics, even as, even as overheads. Sorry, even as overheads uh, in that era, uh, instead of condenser mics. You'd think it would be condenser mics, but there was actually like a sweet spot in the late '60s to the early '70s, according to my Pinterest <laughs> research, where they're using dynamic mics everywhere. And the most common thing I see is uh, a, a bass drum mic, a snare drum microphone, an overhead. And then a floor tom microphone, and the and the floor tom microphone will be either over the floor tom or under. Uh, and with Bill Ward, who was using concert toms already at the time, who was removing the reso heads, um, that made sense. But then there were some pictures, for example, of Mitch Mitchell's kit where it was mic'd underneath, and he was using a reso head uh, under the floor tom as well. So th this mic technique makes sense to me. Um, if you've seen my video on on the Motown drum sound, a, a very common '60s mic technique was: we start with an overhead, and the overhead is 
the image of the drum sound. And then, you know, the nature of popular music was such that it was, it was backbeat music and we, needed, we definitely needed to feel the bass drum. So we put a bass drum microphone and it being backbeat music, the next thing to come up was a snare drum microphone. So those are like a lot of 60s recordings were kick, overhead, and snare drum. And if you've ever used a mod, uh, uh, sorry, a mono overhead, uh, especially with a dynamic or a ribbon, uh, if you have your top tom tuned high enough, uh, it, it actually gets really well picked up in that mono overhead. So the only weak spot becomes the floor tom. And so when I saw this mic technique come up in a lot of pictures, having done similar things in my studio, like I, 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 I kind of really got the mentality. And... Uh, I went, I went looking for bootleg concerts of, you know, Zeppelin and such um, in the early 70s, late 60s to try to hear, you know, I mean, these are, these are really bad recordings, but they, um, the drums still sounded like they were really well represented. So I said, you know, how would this work in a studio pushing through a modern track with some more guitars? And so that's what I did. So it was an RE20 on the kick. Uh, I used a, an SM57 on the snare. I used an, uh, an Audix i5 as the overhead, which I've actually done before on record. And I used that because it seemed to be always an SM57 or some sort of Unidyne or, or, or other iteration of an SM57 as, as the overhead, especially with, with Bonham. And um, so I figured I would just stick with the SM57 or the i5, which is a lot like an SM57. And then I put a Sure Beta 52 under the floor tom. And the reason why I did that was I wanted to capture the tone of the floor tom when I strike it. But um, because I only have four microphones, I want them doing as much work for me as they possibly can. So that, that microphone is also giving me a bit of bottom snare, a bit of extra kick drum. It's actually giving me a bit of vibe. There's, there's, there's more that it's giving me. So I do have it panned a little bit, um, but not that much because it is giving me a little bottom snare and a little bit of kick drum. Uh, and that I'm definitely not gating, that I'm definitely keeping in the mix. So let's have a listen to just the kick drum. Snare. That's pretty self-explanatory. That's that mono overhead, the i5. And... There's that floor tom. Right? So you definitely feel the floor tom, but you also feel the other stuff too. That's going to be compressed, so we'll get more of it. Um, and then, you know, with regards to processing, if you've seen my other video on, on mixing, this is my mastering chain. It's a J37 and uh, the Abbey Road vinyl stereo. This already does quite a bit. So usually I start with the drum bus, but the first thing I did actually was I started with this mono overhead because it was it was a question mark, you know, and uh, I figured in in order to determine whether this was going to be possible, I needed to know if I could make. I mean, the kick and snare were self-explanatory. The floor tom wasn't going to be that critical. The the critical thing was is this mono overhead, this fifty-seven or Audix i five mono overhead going to work? Because I'm hitting a lot of symbols in this song. And is it going to extend my snare drum the way I want it to? And am I, I going to get enough top tom in it? So here's the mono overhead. And it, it does have a bit of that pinched, uh, congested dynamic quality when we use it there. But with a bit of EQ, and by a bit I mean really a lot, but it starts to open up a high pass. The, the first thing I did was I, I really want to have a look at this, that one, 1.5K, and I sucked out about 9 dB of it, 8 dB, and sucked out some low mid, add some bottom, added some top, and I always push the EQ into a compressor fast attack. So when I did this, I was like, all right, I, I think that that's going to be usable, workable, and uh, I'll have enough there that with the other microphones, I can kind of get a drum sound happening. Uh, I also, uh, on the channel EQ, removed, there you go, this uh, 5K 
57s and i5s, I guess, are, are really present there. So just a bit of some of that brightness from the symbol. So once I did that, I said, now I can go back to my regular approach and start with the drum bus, which usually starts with a compressor. And lately it's really been the, the Kramer Pi compressor. So let's just have a quick look. Not too much compression. One or two dBs of uh, reduction. And I always put this SSL G strip on just to remove a bit of low mid. I just like the way this one does it. And already I'm quite a bit closer. So now I can kind of backtrack and uh, here, let me just look this up and, and go to the kick drum. So kick drum processing will be the usual type of stuff. Suck out some low mid, add some top, add some bottom, compress. I send the EQ into the compressor. Slow attack compression, not fast attack on the close mics. I added... Sorry there. Added a bit of a, a transient designer and this boom, this plug-in alliance boom, uh, this BX, sorry. Boom plugin. Just to get... Just to get more tone and more kick out of my kick drum. Let's go to the snare drum. Again, this this will look a lot like my other mix video because the close mics are essentially are the same thing, right? It's, it's pretty drastic. So there's I'm adding 8K, I'm adding some high mid 3.5. I try to leave the mid range intact. I'm uh, adding 130, I'm high passing, I'm expanding. And again, I'm sending that compressor. I'm sending the EQ into the compressor. Then what I like to do a lot of times with the kick or, and with the snare, in this case, I just did it with the snare, is I like to add the, uh, the Sheps uh, 73. And I really like the 220 band on snare. I like to remove a bit of that 1.5K, add some top, add some saturation. Sound, that sounds like a rock snare to me. Rock snares are, um, these days at least, a little scooped. Well, you still feel the mid-range and you feel the realness of it, but there's definitely quite a bit of top and bottom. Right? And with the overhead, which it won't be that loud later. I added the Kramer tape just to just to get a bit of a little more harmonic stuff <laughs> without it. In. Right, I'm trying to I'm trying to get more sound from my sound out of every microphone. So kick, snare, overhead. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's find a floor tom hit, even though that floor tom mic is more than just a floor tom mic, but let's find that. Maybe I'll back this up a bit. So, here, let me go back to the next window. My my approach was essentially to, yeah, I definitely want that. Add some top end so I can feel a little more that that bottom snare. Add some high mid. This looks a little bit like my snare drum EQ actually. Um, there was probably a bit of boinginess at the uh, the one k range. I'm adding a bit of bottom where I would add on a floor tom anyway around one sixty. And I'm sending this EQ into the compressor, slow attack. Right. You kind of only feel it when, um, when I actually hit the floor tom. So let's have a listen to this drum sound. First, I'll mute the floor tom mic. Let's see if we really feel the difference right now. Okay. And in. It's pretty 
so it's not as drastic. Well, wait, I also have the Chef's EQ. I'm adding a little more 60, very little top, and more saturation. Right, that's what it's adding. There we go. Now, I'm doing a lot of stuff in parallel. So the first thing I'm doing is, as usual, I'm adding um, just an ambient verb, in this case, the CLA uh, Echosphere, to just the overhead. I'm extending that overhead. So that'll mean all of a sudden we're in a studio, right? Not in my basement. I'm adding my drum compressor. Again, I, I've done this in another video. That's the purple audio. And I'm sending the close mics. So kick, snare, and I've included the floor tom mic here, yeah. So all this together. Then the third thing I've done is I did a video on this. In case you haven't seen it, go have a look. I'll post a link in my uh, in the description. This is a trick I do where uh, I'll take a mono drum sound and I'll send it to two parallel compressors and pan them hard left and hard right. And the two compressors need to react very differently. Uh, one compressor being really fast and the other one being really kind of slow and grabby. And it kind of fattens up the stereo width of the mix without it being really truly stereo. It's, it's not stereo, but it does widen things a little bit. So in this case, again, the H comp on the left, and I have the H-Comp set pretty slow with a lot of punch. And then the, uh, the um, Fairchild on that first time constant, which is very fast. And these are really aggressive. And that's them all the way up without. They feel stereo because different things are happening in each ear, you know? So they've, it, it kind of cheats it into feeling a little bit stereo. And I use that just to kind of widen my drum sound. Let's say I remove that. Let's say, yeah, so. And I'm just going to blend this in now. Right, at every step, it's just a bit of, a bit of uh, subtle fattening a bit at a time. Here I've put a stereo slap, so I'm sending just the overhead, and I've got a, I've got the Echo Boy Jr. here, and I'm using the Echoplex uh, 16th note slap uh, preset, the wet all the way up because it's a send, and I think I'm widening it with the, uh, with the S1 um, imager here. So let's hear what that does. Let's get everything else in there. Let's mute this. Right? If, you ever, if you've ever played big rooms or big venues, and uh, that kind of happens on its own naturally, right? I want to recreate that. Uh, too much of it will be distracting, but just enough of it adds realism. We want to cheat the way I use compression and, and reverb, uh, you know, as aux sends, is I want to kind of like cheat a realistic image back into, you know, a drum recording. A drum recording is a compromise. I don't care how incredible the mics are I've used not myself, but I've been in studios where we've used, you know, tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars worth of gear, and it'll never come close to actually being in the room with a, with a, with a drum set. So mixing is about reintroducing some of that stuff. Even, even if we have an incredible drum recording, it's just reintroducing some of that 
realism for me, especially making a rock record. You want to feel like you're in the room with the band. That's what's really exciting about a rock record to me. So here we go. And then last but not least, I've, I've just got a plate on the snare to, again, extend it a little bit more. Here I'm using the Arturia. Let's give that a second. Uh, this always changes. It depends on, on the song. I've gone for the third model here, which is the modern model. I try to remove some low end, some top end. I go all the way wide on this and all the way wet because it's a send, and that's about as much thought as I give it. So let's say I mute this. Right, it's some bright ambience just for the snare drum. So it's pretty cool. So everything in together. And, and so the last thing is, well, I've, I've mentioned this, but I really want to drive this home is that the tom, the top tom doesn't have a microphone on it. When you're dealing with minimal miking stuff like this, um, every tuning decision becomes really critical. I've left the snare pretty wide open. Um, kick drum is pretty wide open. I don't think there's anything in there. I am using an EMAD uh, as the uh, batter head, but then I don't think there's anything in there and it's a full rezo head. Um, and the floor tom is really wide open. And uh, again, I'm uh, now I'm not just tuning the tom so that it sounds good on its own, but I'm tuning the tom to make sure it, it gets well represented in the overheads. So here. I mean, it doesn't sound like it's close mic'd and really pushing through the speakers, but when you're listening to the song, uh, I don't, I also don't feel like I'm completely missing it. It just, it, it does feel like a natural kind of representation of the drum set. You're not going to, you, if you're using four dynamic mics on, on your, on your drum set, especially capturing rock, uh, you're not going to get a super wide, super, uh, uh, a very, uh, completely impactful, uh, drum sound. You're getting a representation of the drum set, you know. So once you kind of accept that fact, then you can just give yourself a little bit of latitude and let things not be overly represented. And uh, they'll still sound cool. They'll still sound really good. I think the song still works. I've got a bit of a mastering EQ here. I'll just go put that on. What I'm looking for as, as the drummer on the project, but also as a fan and listening to the music is, have I captured the instrument, the sound of the instrument, and the energy? I mean, that's what rock and roll is about to me, is, and, and punk is, do I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm in the room there and, and kind of feeling the energy of the take? And uh, I was surprised at how well this worked. I'm going, I'm going to be using this take, um, and this mic scheme, all of this, I'll be using this on, on the released version of this. This is uh, the Chemical Syndicate, my, my solo project. And uh, these will be play-alongs. I'll also release these as play-alongs. So there'll be uh, versions on streaming platforms with click that you can play along to on your, on your iPhones and whatever. And then I'll, I'll release versions that are drumless and also without click so that you can try recording your own drums to these and maybe 
maybe even using this te this technique and seeing if it works for you. And things to keep in mind with this technique are uh, uh, really tuning. Tuning is the biggest, biggest thing. Uh, using dynamic mics around the kit, the room actually becomes less critical. So that is to your advantage. So how can you cheat things into feeling like they're bigger recordings. I've used, first of all, I used bigger drums. You might not have that available to you, but I've used 20 inch kick drums that sound huge without a, a hole in the reso head. Um, keep things tuned wide open, keep things tuned a little tighter than you'd, you'd think would be appropriate for, for a rock tune. And because uh, those are some of the principles that were observed in the late 60s, early 70s, where this mic technique that I, that I kind of scoped out was being used, you know, so if it was working for them, I kind of had to think about how they were tuning their drums, how was Mitch Mitchell tuning his drums, how was, obviously, how was John Bonham tuning his drums, that's the thing we're most obsessed about, <laughs> most obsessed with, I think, because... You know, that's just the coolest drum sound ever. So, um, yeah, I hope this works out for you. Thank you.